Hello and welcome. This video is about probably the most hated architectural style, brutalism. What is brutalism? Why is it so hated? Is it making a comeback? I use sources for most of my story. Some of the info is my interpretation. All of my sources are listed in the description. Continuing. Brutalism emerged in the middle of the 20th century after World War II. The term was first used by the Swedish architect Hans Asplund in the 1950s. He called the style he designed his building in Nybrutalism. The building he designed, named Vilaget in Uppsala, Sweden, is a red brick house where the internal walls are made from the same material. The bricks are left in a bare state, just like the concrete used for the bathrooms. The term Nybrutalism was picked up by British architects visiting Sweden. In 1953, Alison Smithson used it to describe an unbuilt house in Soho, London. This building appeared in the November issue of Architectural Design, giving the name for the style more notoriety. Alison Smithson stated in the article, It is all intention in this building to have the structure exposed entirely without interior finishes wherever practicable. The term gained even more notoriety when Rainer Banham published his 1955 essay, The New Brutalism. In this essay, he associated the new brutalism with beton brut, which means raw concrete, translated from French. In 1966, he published another book called The New Brutalism, Ethic or Aesthetic. In this book, he bundled similar architectural styles in one style called Brutalism. By now the term brutalism was widely accepted under architects for this style. Brutalism was most commonly used for social housing, schools and government buildings in the afterwar period, like the well-known Boston City Hall and the Trellick Tower in London, and many university buildings in Europe. But it was not limited to this only. Office buildings and shopping centers from the time were also constructed using the style. Brutalism was mainly popular due to the low construction costs and the then modern look. All over the world brutalist buildings can be found and each country has its own type of brutalism while staying within the limits of the style. For example, the more smooth style of brutalism found in the Americas, like the Boston City Hall, Buffalo City Court Building, Habitat Soissonse in Montreal, the rough, blocky style mostly found in Northern Europe, like the Barbican Estate from London, and the Utrecht University. The over-the-top style of Japan, like the Nakaking Capsule Tower, Yoyoki National Gymnasium, and the Yamanashi Broadcasting System headquarters in Kofu. And the construct fist architecture of the USSR and the Eastern Bloc, like the Western City Gate in Belgrade. What defines brutalism is a building made out of repeated modular elements, mostly made out of concrete sometimes out of brick in case of brick brutalist buildings. The surface reveals the way of construction and the seams of steel plates or the texture of planks is visible in the concrete elements used. Nothing is painted or stuccoed over. Other features of the building are shown on the outside, like an elevator shaft or water tank, for example. The problem of defining brutalism is that a building that is brutalist can belong to multiple architectural styles like the standard modernist style, the international style, expressionism, postmodernism, and many more. For example, the Piet van Dommel house, which also conforms to the rules of modernism as stated in my previous video on modernism. Brutalism was heavily criticized from the beginnings onwards. It was described as cold-hearted, inhuman, shite, probably said by a random Englishman. The bad aging of brutalist buildings in damp climates did not help. The concrete stained badly due to moisture. Most social housing was not insulated, so the cold look outside didn't give any warm feelings on the inside either. The 80s hit, and the brutalist movement had largely disappeared. The hate of the general public directed towards brutalist buildings on the other hand was still very much prevalent. From this point on, a large number of brutalist buildings were scheduled for demolition or renovation, like the Welbeck Street car park and the Tricon Center, which are both demolished. The Piet van Dommelhuis and the Grenfell Towers were both renovated. 
The latter had a devastating disaster on the 14th of June 2017 due to the cover-up cladding used catching on fire. This type of cladding is still used on many brutalist buildings and still poses danger to inhabitants of these buildings. If there is interest enough, I can make a video on the type of cladding used. While the voices against brutalism screamed louder and louder, a voice for preservation could also be heard. There was a movement to preserve the brutalist buildings for both the Welbeck Street car park and the Tricorn Centre. A lot of other large brutalist complexes like the Barbican Estate and Trellick Tower are listed as buildings. All out of nowhere, brutalism became popular again in an unexpected place, Instagram. An enormous wave of people posting brutalist buildings with the hashtag brutalism. This resurgence of popularity led to campaigns like SOS Brutalism, which became an exhibition and produced a book, SOS Brutalism, a global survey. This also helped other books like How to Love Brutalism and His Brutal World. They all vouched for the preservation of brutalist buildings. New buildings like 432 Park Avenue in New York and the extension to the Swiss National Museum hint back to the brutalist style. Both have a bare concrete exterior and are stark contrast with their surroundings. All in all, the future for many brutalist buildings is uncertain. Hated by most, loved by some. What is certain is that many of the buildings in the brutalist style will be demolished in the coming years either because of the hate by the public or decay due to the high maintenance cost of brutalist buildings. For some to be able to form a meaning about architecture, one must be able to choose between styles. For most, brutalism will be on the dislike side. This isn't bad, because every story needs a good antagonist. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And watch my other video on modernism.